We're talking to Carmen Tarleton, a woman who is fighting to get her life back after a tragic attack nearly killed her four years ago. Join us now by Polycom from Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston is Dr. Bowden Pomahawk, Director of Plastic Surgery Transplantation. Dr. Pomahawk, welcome to our show. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. So we've been talking with Carmen about, obviously, so much that she's had to go through. And what we want to discuss now is face transplantation, the possibilities for Carmen, and the other big question here is, we're hearing more and more about face transplants. Is this something that you're doing commonly now? Well, uh, we have done uh, four cases now, and uh, Carmen could be potentially our fifth. Dr. Pomock, as a plastic surgeon, I'm, I'm totally intrigued with what you're doing here. Obviously, when I trained, we weren't doing anything like this. So this is uh, really special surgery. Absolutely, and we'll be able to restore her eyelids hopefully completely functional eyelids that will protect her uh, artificial corneas and the remnants of sight that she has. We'll be able to transplant part of the nose and we'll be able to transplant to lips that will allow her to control them and speak better, get rid of the drooling and uh, be able to feed herself. Of course, the big question is how and where do you find the right face, the right match for Carmen? in terms of a new face? What we'll be looking for is, uh, is a donor that has uh, acceptable skin match, age match, and certainly sex match. So it will be something uh, that will take a while and will be a process of, of a search. And I, I, we ha I think we have an animation here of exactly what happens during the surgery. If you could just in broad strokes describe how it actually occurs. Sure. So this is Carmen's face uh, with, as you can see, a lot of scarring, retracted and missing lips that we would essentially superficially take off and then replace with the donor tissues that contain all the right parts, including the eyelids, nose, upper, lower lip, and possibly even the left ear. And I think it's really important. You hit upon this. For Carmen, this is certainly, yes, there's a cosmetic el element, but Carmen is dealing with contractures. She's, Carmen, you're dealing with, with issues with your neck where you're hoping to get some functional improvement, right? Yes, I, I feel like I don't have a lot of function at all, in my ne especially in my mouth and in, in not being able to blink my eyes. Uh, that's my biggest concern along with the scar dands on my neck that Dr. Tonahawk, we've done lots of surgeries on and it, and it just has just, it's just failed. Uh, and this causes me, the bulk of my pain four years later is right here in my neck. Will you be able to address that in your surgery, Dr. Pomahawk? Absolutely, yeah, it's part of the plan to extend uh, the amount of skin from the donor to uh, release and resurface a uh, large part of the neck. So Carmen, is this something that, that you're excited about, you're nervous about? Both. I'm very excited. I am nervous that sometimes it's easier to just put my nerves aside because it gave me a new opportunity that I didn't even know existed. So I'm, I'm excited about it. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Pomock, for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. And Carmen, if I may, you know, we hear about all types of stories of, of inspiration but I think everyone here in this audience, everyone watching at home, can truly say that you inspire us. You thank are you. a story of inspiration. Um, and, I, and, and thank you for sharing you. your story with us today. We're going to continue to follow Carmen's story to find out how the next chapter unfolds. And we want to help by setting up a fund for Carmen with the Dr. Phil Foundation. And if you're watching right now and you want to make a donation to Carmen's fund, Go to our website, click on Carmen's story, and make a donation.